And we see here that we want to find x. What's the relationship of x and any of my other angles? Xavier. What's the question? What's the relationship of this 3x angle and any of my other angles? You can pick any of them and make the relationship. X. So with this angle, is, how is it related to this one? How is it related to this one? Or how is it related to this one? He's up in big alert. X. Oh, X. Okay. So how are these two related? They next to each other. They're next to each other. What do we call angles that are next to each other? Yeah. Consecutive. And consecutive yeah. angles are? Supplementary. supplementary. And supplementary means? 180. So we know that we have 3X plus 90 equals 180. You can subtract over 90. You end up with 3X equals 90. We can talk about how you did it. There's another way. So you could have done it this way. You got 3 or X equals 90. You could have done it Nemo's way. Nemo used the fact that these two angles are opposite of each other and opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Solve from there. Next one up. Ready? We have a parallelogram. What's the relationship between these two sides? Wait, they are. Equal. So opposite sides are congruent. congruent. So, so we. So you have these two are congruent, which means same measure. With it meaning same measure, that means we set them equal to each other. X equals three. Our first portion here, we are talking about properties of. Um, Rhom rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Our first one is a rhombus. It's a parallelogram with all congruent sides. So yeah, we've been talking about parallelograms, and now these are types of them. So rhombus has all congruent sides, and congruent sides means that they're all the same length. And then you have these two properties. Each of the diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. So where it's intersecting that angle, it's going to have that be bisected. And then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So I'm going to add stuff to the picture at the bottom so you can see it. So I want you to put the definition right next to the word where it says like rhombus. Write out a parallelogram with. And then underneath properties, put them there. Okay, so over here, this is now right angles. Oh, you can't see that. Well, let me change my color. And then you see that this has been bisected. And it's going to be true for all of them. Number two says each of the diagonal, each diagonal is perpendicular um, bisector of the other. Yes. So we have a rectangle, which is a parallelogram with four right angles. And then we talk about our diagonals are congruent. Previously, we talked about when a diagonal has been bisected, the two parts of one diagonal are congruent. But now we have the entire diagonal is congruent. So we see that this line here is congruent to this line here. So we see that a square is a parallelogram that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. It has the four congruent sides. It has the four right angles. But the property is the most important part. You see that the diagonal forms four congruent isosceles triangles. And those isosceles triangles are 45, 45, 90. The other ones are going to form isosceles triangles. But this one's that special right triangle that we've been learning about. Okay, so we see here this is a rhombus. I already filled in the information that was given. And now using that, let's fill out the other side. So a rhombus has four congruent sides. So if AD is 13, DC has to be 13. Nice job. And we know that CB has to be? And we know that AB has to be? Okay. With that, we also know that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. So that means the diagonal length has been cut in half. So on the top, if we have DX is 5, what does XB have to be? It has to be 5. So we have this and this. And if AX is 12, what does XC have to be? 12. Nice job. Okay, so now that we have all the information we need at this moment, we're going to go solve. So BX is what length? It's 5. CX? 12. BC? 13. DB? It's 10 because it's that 5 plus 5. 
AC is 24. It's 12 plus 12. DC 13. And then DC is what? 13. 13. <laughs> okay, so we see that this forms, the diagonals form a isosceles triangle. So if this one is 32, what do we know angle one has to be? Has to be 32. So we see that this is 32 degrees. With that information here, we see we have two parallel lines being cut by a transversal. What does that mean angle four has to be? 32. 32. Okay, so that leaves angle three and angle two for us to find. Knowing that this is a rectangle, what do we know about the angles? Bless you, bless you. That they are all equal and they're all equal to the same amount, which is? 90 degrees. All of them are right angles. So we all know these are all right angles. So if we know that this is a right angle, it's 90 degrees, and this is 32 degrees, what is the other one? Okay, the square in the corner tells you it's a right angle. I'm not talking about, no more, no more. You see that you have angle three. How do we find angle three? 90 minus 32. When we do that, what do you get? So here you see that that's 58. With that, we see that this angle over here has to be what? 58 because that is an isosceles triangle that formed there. How do I find angle two? We see right here that this is a triangle. What's the interior of a triangle? 180. 180. So we take 180 and we subtract the two angles we know. We know that we, the, both the other angles are 58, which gives me 116. 180 minus 116 equals how much, hun? 64 degrees. So now we just have to go through and write in what we know. Well, we had angle one up here, and that was 32 degrees. We have angle 2, which is 64 degrees. We have angle 3, which is 58 degrees. We have angle 4, which is 34 degrees. And then we are back at... I do. I mean 32. Thank you. Okay. And then we are back at this. So we see key, key. KTN. KTN. Remember the one in the middle is your vertex. So KTN. What is the angle measure there for this whole angle? It's 90. So we see that that's 90 degrees. Okay, now we have T N E. What is this angle measure? The whole thing. So all of angle N, all the way across. How much is it? It's 90. Yep. So it's 90 degrees. Okay. Oh, seeing that this is a rectangle and that we have two sides, we know the opposite sides are? congruent. So if A, B is 4, what's C, D? 4. What's A, B, or A, D have to be? 3. Okay, our goal is to find the length of our diagonal, A, C. On my other classes, or in my other classes, I drew this out separately. So you could see that triangle by itself. So this is triangle A, B, C. So I just took that top triangle and put it over here. We see this is four, we see this is three. How do I go about finding my hypotenuse? Famous mathematician. Um, Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is C equals square root of A squared plus B squared. We're back to this. So we end up with four squared plus three squared. What is four squared? 16 was three squared. What does that end up being? 25. Square root of 25 is? 5. 5. So we know the length of our hypotenuse is 5. So we know the diagonal from A to C is 5. You can do this again because we know that triangle ADC <laughs> has legs of 3 and 4. You can do the Pythagorean theorem. Or you can know that by our properties, we know that rectangles diagonals are congruent. So that also means that this is going to be 5. Okay, so now we get to substitute in. So we see that AC is how much? <laughs> Five. DC is? BD. AD. What is CX? It's going to be two and a half. How did you know that? 
because it's Kalen's right. It's been bisected, so that means that five is split in half between those two parts. So you take five divided by two, and it gives you 2.5. So that's five divided by two, 2.5. Okay, so we see here that we have 21. When we have our diagonals intersect, they form these isosceles triangles. So if this is 21, what does this angle have to be? So if this is forming an isosceles triangle, what does this angle have to be? It has to be 21. So 5 is 21. Okay, over here, we can now go on to solve angle 1. So we know that the entire sum of an interior of a triangle adds how much? 180. So the way to get angle 4 is you do 180 minus 21 plus 21, which is 42. What do you get when you do that? 138. So you know angle 4 is 138. You know angle 5 is 21. You know angle 1 is what? How do we find angle 1? So Rio's on to it. What'd you say? 90 minus 21 because it's a right angle. And you have half of that right angle. So you know how. So since this is 90 degrees, we take what we know, 90 is minus 21. So for angle one is 90 minus 21. 69 degrees. Okay. This in itself is another isosceles triangle. So what are these two angles? They're going to be... Sorry, I can't search the web on... Oh, it had to be 69. And then angle 3, we have to find that with... 180 minus 69. It's um, 69. And what did you get, hon? So anybody have a little more confidence? I mean, I'm not saying he's wrong. So you end up with 42. We have a square. The di no, the diagonals bisect each other and form what? A special type of right tri uh, right triangle. What is it? It's a right triangle. It tells you on the other page. It's a blank, blank, 90. It's a 45, 45, 90. Well, you're, these are perpendicular. So you know this is your 90 angle. That means up here, this is a 45. This is a 45. It means this over here is a 45. This down here is a 45. Okay, be nice to each other, please. Okay, and then after this, we know the lengths of the sides. If this side is 12, what are all of my other sides? Well, fill it out. One, two, three. Okay, now this brings us back to our last chapter. Yay, us. I'm going to draw a triangle off to the side so you can see it. This is triangle ABC, triangle ABC. Here we have A, here we have B, here we have C. We know our legs are going to be 12. We know this is a right angle, and we know that these are each 45. We talked about last chapter special right triangles. We had two types of special right triangles, a 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90, and you had to know the side lengths. So for a 45, 45, 90, what are your side lengths? Um, Not this one. Oh, three. X radical two. And then X. So remember, this is the one where you have the two side lengths that are the same, and then you attach a root two on the hypotenuse. So over here, we have two side lengths that are the same, and we attach a root two on our hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is what? 12. Yep, 12 square root of two. Okay, so we have a 12 square root 2 happening there. And then we want to break that up. So if that's my whole diagonal's length, what's my distance from A to X going to be? So A to X is half of that distance, right? We're dividing in half. It's been bisected. So what's half of 12 square root of um, 2? 12 divided by 2 is? 
6 square root of 2, 6 square root of 2, 6 square root of 2, 6 square root of 2. I know it's a small box, guys. Okay, so now that we have that, we can answer every question. So dx is how big? What's our length? 6 square root of 2. Okay, our next one up is AB. AB is? 12. Okay, AX is? 6 square root of 2. DX is? BC is? DB is? And AC is what? Okay, our last three on this page are the angles. Keep that away. We see that we have AXB. So AXB is what is our angle here? It's 90. So we know this is 90 degrees. We have XAB, which is? Ah, be careful. What is XAB? It's 45. And then we have XBA. What is it? So we have 45 and 45. 